Hello and welcome back to Joe's Barbecue House. Today we're going to take this Smoky Cajun Bandit, the meat hanging mod, and we are going to do some ribs. Yes, more ribs because I want to test this baby out. I want to see how fast I could cook these ribs but get them done to the tenderness that I like. And of course, what my family likes. But we'll see. I'm going to attempt two hours. Going to try, oh, I don't know, 350 degrees. Let's get it up that hot. Here I got the charcoals getting lit. And once they are hot, red hot, I'm going to go ahead and add them to this chamber here. Usually I start uh, the coals in there with lighter cubes in there, but it just takes a lot longer for it to fire up. So I got this half full of uh, the blue bag Kingsford. And once it's lit, I'm going to open the hatch and I'm going to show you how I uh, get that charcoal inside this uh, pit here. So stay tuned. Next time you see me, we'll be putting the ribs on here. All right, everybody, we got three slabs of ribs here. Going to go ahead and get these membranes off or silver skin. And here is my hot rub. The recipe is in the description below. I just have them in these containers here. And here is my SPG, salt, pepper, garlic. I will get this in the description um, after I use this up because I'm still testing it. I added more pepper because I seem to add pepper, extra pepper on every cut of meat I do. So let's go ahead and get these membranes off. Best way to do this, just kind of take your nail and or a butter knife or a spoon and just kind of pick up on one of the edges. Just grab a paper towel. You should be able to get in there and get a grip on them and pull it off. Just like that. Very easy to do. If some is on there, that'll be fine. We're putting this on the uh, the Smoky Cajun Bandit meat hanger mod. All right, let's go ahead and I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. I shall return and we'll get these babies seasoned up. Let's go ahead and get this SPG put on here. We're not gonna go too heavy with it today because we're gonna add some of that hot rub on these. I'm gonna go light on it. Not using any binders at all. All right, just kind of pat them in a little bit. Flip them over and we will do the other side. So every once in a while, you want to shake your rubs, make sure you're getting all of it blended in just right. All right, looking good. Okay, so what we're gonna do is let these chill in the refrigerator while I get the pit started, and we'll go from there. Hello and welcome back to Joe's Barbecue House. Today we're gonna take this Smoky Cajun Bandit, the meat hanging mod, and we are going to do some ribs. Yes, more ribs because I want to test this baby out. I want to see how fast I could cook these ribs but get them done to the tenderness that I like. And of course, what my family likes. But we'll see. I'm going to attempt two hours. I'm going to try, oh, I don't know. 350 degrees, let's get it up that hot. Here I got the charcoals getting lit, and once they are hot, red hot, I'm gonna go ahead and add them to this chamber here. Usually I start uh, the coals in there with lighter cubes in there, but it just takes a lot longer for it to fire up. So I got this half full of uh, the blue bag Kingsford, and once it's lit, I'm gonna open the hatch, and I'm gonna show you how I, uh, 
get that charcoal inside this uh, pit here. So, stay tuned. Next time you see me, we'll be putting the ribs on here. All right, everybody. We have a nice flame rising up to the top of this chimney here. And here I like to show you how I add the hot coals. Just give it a little shake. Knock some of them loose ashes out. You're going to open the door and just put them right against the door and just let them fall in. Just like that. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my tongs here. No, these aren't the ones I use in my food. We're just going to kind of push them across the top of these coals. And make sure all your bottom vents are wide open. So we're just going to kind of mix all these in. Like I said, just kind of throw them around there. They will catch in time. And for right now, I'm going to start with all the vents wide open. Even this top one for now. So again, so you guys can see here. I'm going to leave this top vent wide open and let this thing crank up and get hot. Uh, once they get around 350 degrees, uh, down here and up here, try to even them out like I normally can. Uh, I will shut this top vent and what that will allow this to do is act as like a pit barrel cooker where you hang your meat and the drippings fall into the coals and comes right back up. And it, actually where this thing will vent is out uh, where these rods go through. Uh, and out of some of the holes here because this here for those of you that don't know uh, This is the Weber kettle uh, Rotisserie ring. It's uh, made by Cajun bandit excellent company I just this can be used on the Weber kettle and then flipped to be used for the Weber Smoky Mountain well If I wanted to I could still use it as a rotisserie the you know pulling these rods out and putting it on the uh, Weber kettle it doesn't matter because you cook when you're rotisserie and you're rotisserie at higher temperatures anyway. So you're not smoke, rotisserie and smoking, okay? You don't do that. That's why I didn't mind drilling holes through my rotisserie ring. So I can use, still use it as a rotisserie for the Weber kettle and use it for an extension ring and slash like, uh, well, me hanging mine. All right, everybody. I don't know if you can see that from over there but we are reading at 375 degrees on the top. And here at the bottom, we are exactly reading 350 degrees, which is exactly what I want. It's pretty common for these to get hotter at the top because your heat rises. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and get these ribs put on. We go ahead and grab them. I got them over here on the cutting board. Just gonna grab one at a time. And I kinda wanna show you what I did here. So, as you can see, it's not really a daisy chain because my hooks are, they're kinda tall. I need to get a different set of hooks. But this will work. I went down like the fifth bone or so and hooked them up right here. Come back through, hooked them up, so there. I don't think these things are going anywhere. Because if you guys remember my last rib cook, I didn't uh, remove the membrane. And I, cause I was afraid they were going to fall off the bone by hooking them up here. So we're going to try something different. Let's go ahead and get these bad boys on. Enough wasting some time. All right. I'm going to hang one about right here. I'm going to go ahead and get the other two. Just going to hang them right here in the center. All right, and what I'm also going to do is open up this door and show you how low uh, the bottom of the ribs are to the fire. Some of you guys are wondering that. So I'm going to kind of set them like that. Go ahead and put the lid on. And we're just going to let these things go. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this here. One second. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and open this door. And I'm going to show you how these ribs are hanging in here. Kind of show you how I got the fire set up. Pretty common, very simple. Now here, as you can see, if I had to guess, I would say they're approximately eh, 10 inches, maybe a foot from the coals there. 
And as you can see up there, they're hanging. So let's go ahead and show you what they look like on the top view. Well, there you go. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get this back together. And just let it go. Like I said, I'm going to maintain the temperatures of 350 degrees, maybe even 375 on this bottom vent here. Or I meant bottom vent, the bottom gauge. We might go up to 375 on that one. Just going to let it go. Just going to let it rip. Oh, and by the way, I did close the top vent. There you go. All right, we'll check back in about an hour and see how these things are doing. All right, just want to give you an update. We're approximately 15 minutes in, and I just wanted to show you guys that how even this thing is cooking. Uh, or I should say how even the pit temps are. We're at 375 at the top, and we're at 375 here at the bottom. And that's where I'm going to leave it. So we'll see how she does. All right, everybody. We're still around the same temps, about 375. You know, uh, down here, we're still the same, uh, 375. Actually, it's about 380 here at the bottom. Averaging pretty close to the all around even temps throughout this entire cook. Now, we are one hour in. We are going to check these. Let's see what they look like. Whoa, really? Um, wow. I'm going to go ahead and get a temp on these. I see a lot of bone pull here. Huh. We're sitting at 195. Don't tell me I got these done in one hour. 206. 195. Let me try that again. Uh, I think I just nailed ribs in one hour in this thing. I'm not going to take any chances. I'm going to pull them and let them rest a little bit. I'm not even going to sauce these. I'm going to go ahead and get this lid back on. I'm going to get my hot gloves on and get them hooks and uh, get them laid out in the cutting board and just tint some aluminum foil over it and let them rest. Like I said, I don't want to sauce these. I want to try to flavor just from this. I did not add any wood chunks at all. If I had to do this again, I would like to use um, the uh, lump coal. I think it would have probably gave off, probably would give a little bit better flavor than the charcoal. But I'm, I'm cool with charcoal. Trust me, I've been do, using it for years, so I already know these are going to come out nice. Um, all right, I'm pretty excited about this, guys. I think I nailed the ribs in one hour. But we're going to find out. Stay tuned. Okay, let's get these things popped off here. I'm going to go set them over there on my cutting board. But first, I'm going to have you guys take a look at these. Look at those. Wow, you got some nice pull back there. Not sure if you guys can see that. You can see this over here. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and put these on the cutting board and just tint some foil over them. And boy, I got to tell you, they smell delicious. My God. Okay, let's try this one. Oh, wait, this one's hooked this way. Look at these dripping juices everywhere. Some more pull back there. You guys can see. Hopefully you guys can see that. They feel really tender. But we're going to let these babies rest. Huh. Cool. Nice color on them too. Very nice color. Put them over there in that sunlight. Ooh, that fire is raging down there. All right, everybody. There you go. You see those juices dripping there? 
So we're going to go ahead and get these inside out of the cold weather. Get some foil tinted on these babies. And we will check back here in about 10 minutes. All right, everybody. Just when you thought you were done, the wife asked, my wife Lori, if I would do bacon wrapped asparagus. I said, absolutely. So I went ahead and took the rotisserie ring off, as you can see right there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. And, well, I should say the meat hanger mod. So I just put it back to the standard Weber Smoky Mountain. No diffuser plate, straight fire. We're sitting, I think, about 325 degrees right now in the pit. And yes, you want higher temps for these. I don't know if you guys can see this very well. Whoa, I don't want to lose any. Here, you know what? I'll just get you guys a close-up. Now this here is the bottom rack of my stack system. So I don't need the other racks. Um, we're just going to put it in like, as like if it was just a standard uh, WSM. So what I'm going to do is shut this down. And we're looking good there. Got some nice coals there at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and open up all the vents. And let this crank up and hopefully within 15, 20 minutes, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll have us some bacon wrapped asparagus for snacks after dinner. All right, everybody. These have only been sitting for approximately seven, eight minutes. Go ahead and see what we got here. Wow, they sure do smell wonderful. All right, just want to make sure that I'm all focused in here. Get a little bit more lighting on this. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and cut into these and see what we got. God, yeah, look at that. Nice, tender. I'm going to get this one here out the way. Look at the juiciness on that. Even got a nice smoke ring in there. I hope my lighting isn't too bright. Let's go ahead and get a taste. Mmm. Perfect. Clean off the bone but not too tender where they're gonna slip off the bone. Mm. Look at that. Nice, clean. You guys see that smoke ring? Mm -mm -mm. Wow, these things got incredible flavor. Wow. Well, that's my first time Smoking some ribs, oops, sorry, in one hour. Absolutely perfect. No wrapping, no sauce. As you can see, they're just great color. Excellent rib. Maybe I'll get you a smoke ring shot in here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Maybe if I get a closer. Very nice. All right, guys, we're going to sit here and we're going to enjoy us some ribs. Thanks for watching. Again, always, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Like the video if you learned something. And share to your friends if you'd like. But there you go. Look at that. One hour ribs on the Weber Smoky Mountain with the meat hanging mod. Thanks and have a great day.